to. I am in Dunbar today. I've only been here for about 10 minutes just off the train. This 20 minute train journey out of Edinburgh, so in total with like train change times, so about two hours away from Dundee. But I think it's worth it. Look at this place. So today is going to be much the same as my last one. I'm not going to be able to sit that, except for this time I have a multiple rucksack so that it doesn't get wet. I'm in a different place and uh, I'm wearing my favourite rock wooly jacket because, well, it's a running jacket, but it has so many pockets that I can hopefully fit everything in. So the tide is, low tide is in half an hour, so I'm going to head down that way. My aim is to hit that little patch there because to me that looks like kelp fronds that float in the water so I'm going to hit that and see if we can find anything super cool Our aim is to get here <laughs> that that was a real pain to get to because this entire shore is just covered in seaweed which is really slippy but I have kind of made it to the kelp beds they're the really low low tide ones which uh, low tide's about now so there's no point really trying to go out to them because they're, they're going to be on the water but there's plenty of kelp fronds all around here that it's definitely worth exploring. So kelp is a lower shore species, so your lower shores are subtidal, so you're only going to see these on a low tide. So you have to make sure that you get here before or at low tide, and you always have to keep an eye on it, because this is the first thing we're going to push back, especially when the seaweed is slippy to get back in. You have to allow yourself some extra time, so a life lesson for me there. So, kelp is a macro algae, but it is a macro macro algae. It's massive. Uh, in places like America, the kelp beds that seals and otters and that swim through, the stuff you see on Blue Planet, is a species of kelp that grows ridiculously fast. In the UK, we don't have that species, but this is the same type of seaweed, same group, but just doesn't grow as much. But you can see, compared to, I mean, not that I'm very tall, but, and I'm not lifting this all up because I've only got one part of the front, but you can see that, uh, yeah, kelp's a bit bigger than some of the other species. And as you can see on the end of here, it is a food snails and anything that grazes there's tons of them uh yeah also really slimy i just find something interesting to prod the gopro around it I 
I have just spotted what I came out here to show you guys. One of the prettiest, prettiest marine invertebrate species that you can find in the UK. And it lives on the blades of kelp fronds pretty much exclusively, as far as I'm aware. It is a type of limpet. It's gorgeous. It's blue. It's rayed. It's the blue rayed limpet. Maybe one of the coolest things I have ever found. I've seen one before, but it was really murky and it was. Come on. How has he hidden himself away? Are you massive. Where'd he go? A, a wander around the rock pool, I moved some seaweed about and he wasn't there. This rock is hollow I think, so I think he's probably got his little nook and cranny under it, so I, I won't disturb him too much, I feel bad deliberately um, deliberately going after him if it, if he wasn't just, you know, hide under a bit of seaweed. I don't want to stress him out, especially if he's, if he's in his home. Uh, I will come back in a minute though, I think I might go check out another rock pool and then come back and just see if he's wandered out of his home. Oh, I'm too excited, I'm too excited. I am too excited. Maybe. Oh, there he is. to say it that is by far the best rock pool find I have ever found ever probably by quite a long shot I brought you down here to show you blu-ray limpets but I gave you a lobster that's what we do at marine mumbles this is what we do on this YouTube channel we show you the unexpected amazingness of the UK wildlife and this lobster was a prime example of just how cool the the stuff you can find here is if you just take the time to to go find it how lucky was that how lucky was that <laughs> <gasps> Uh, species at the bottom of the 
quite sure. Which is really interesting and something that I haven't seen too much, so I haven't really paid too much attention to it. So I think in the future, I think I need to look up what they are so that I can fully appreciate them. But I'm gonna see if I can get a macro picture of this one because I could give anyone when it comes to rock pooling is if you want to find something don't look for it which doesn't make much sense but a bit like Johnny Depp when he goes and uh, acclimatizes to sea turtles to rope together with back hair you will start to see so much move I was standing in that rock pool for maybe 10-15 minutes I saw dozens of juvenile fish that I couldn't see from when I first observed all the little rhino shells that I thought were little rhino were actually hermit crabs and they were actually were doing some really interesting stuff one of them was trying to like figure out and finish eating a bit of a, a loose crab claw I saw for the first time that I've ever really seen a predatory polychaete worm having a roam around I think it was a polychaete worm one of the rocks uh, I saw the mum or brother or old, older version of the tiny fish that I was seeing. It's like the lobster. I didn't, I wasn't looking for a lobster. I just was wandering around and saw it moving. Um, and the stiller you are, the more you're gonna see other things move. The less you drip the water, the less you disturb the sediment, the stiller everything's going to seem, and the more you are, are gonna see. Got some sponge. Gross feeling sponge, sea squat. Hairy, broad clawed porcelain crab. Oh, that guy has not got a long name for such a short one. Ladies and gents, that is this week's uh, video and this rock pooling session come to an end. I could have continued rock pooling for hours, uh, but I have to go. So, sad face. There has Dunbar if, Beach. If you ever, if you ever get a chance to come here, please go rock pooling. Uh, be 
careful of the seaweed, but apart from that, it has such a diverse range of wildlife. I've seen so many crusting species that either I've not seen before, and I have no idea how to ID. I've seen so many different types of seaweeds. Um, I've seen at least three or four different types of fish, whether I caught them on camera or not, or just seen them darting about. I've seen shrimp, I've seen hermit crab, I've seen edible crab, I've seen broadclawed, hairy broadclawed porcelain crabs, um, I've seen a, a hunting polychaete worm, um, we've seen oh, a blue rayed limpet, we've seen kelp, and obviously, I was saving this till last, we saw a lobster. I mean, this place is amazing and literally I have explored from that little road down out to where the kelp beds are and then back again and looked in maximum maybe five rock pools and then the edge of the stuff. There is so much stuff here. Such a good time this time. I think I'm just gonna as soon as I get home this evening to spend my entire waking hours repeat watching that lobster because he was gorgeous and that was amazing. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you like this vlog. I hope you like coming rock pulling with me. Ooh. Have a good week everyone and I will see you next week. Bye!